I think I need to explain some backstory about why I've been so hesitant to teach psychic development. First of all, Jung said that the search for psychic development is the search of the self. Once again, someone is referring to the search for the ultimate psychic experience as actually coming back to yourself. The temple at Apollo in Delphi, Delphi, uh, in Greece, says the same thing. Know thyself. And it's affiliated with psychics and psychic ability. And they knew this thousands of years ago, and yet people seem to forego that very important basic thing in favor of, gee, I just want this neat trick that I can do. I don't know if it's real or not, but it sure is neat, and I want to be a part of it. Or, Anya seems really neat. I just want to be close to her. And I'm sorry if that sounds bitchy, but I feel like the point of what I'm supposed to do is not be your friend. The point of what I'm supposed to do is maybe teach you lessons if I can. But the thing is, people seem so enamored of their daddy issues and so enamored of their people-pleasing instincts. And so enamored of, well, I took this course, so therefore I know. And I know some psychics who have done that, who are spiritually arrogant as fuck. And they not only promote this, they promote this lie that working with military remote viewers is a really neat thing, that it's really good. And let me preface this. I know tons of really cool people in the military. I'm not fundamentally against a strong defense. But when you live in a totalitarian surveillance state that uh, owns the military and loses the script, loses the point of its existence um, in favor of spying on people like me to see what they can do, in their way of psychic ability, maybe I'm not being so clear. I have re military remote viewers beaming themselves into my home constantly. They use me as a test subject to this day. And these people who are promoting people like military m remote viewers, I'm not going to say names in this because I don't want to get heaps of shit on me, but um, I've complained about them before because all they seem to do is hurt me they don't help me. And all these people who want to rub shoulders with me and think I'm really neat, all they seem to want to do is test me and use me and uh, or just say, well, I, you know, I worked with her and therefore just by virtue of being close to me, I'm somehow imbued with this special thing. And I'm just, I don't seem to benefit. You know, money seems like a really cheap substitute for the benefits of what could be had. You know, it's like an exchange for money doesn't really do it for me anymore. It's not that I'm against making money. It's like, I want to make money that I like making. I don't want to make money where it's like in the service of a reality television show that's raping my abilities, that's raping what I do. And I don't want to work for the CIA which I was asked to work with. It, I was asked to work in a remote viewing experiment with people in the CIA. And they told me flat out that it was military or intelligence remote viewers in the CIA. And if you don't believe that, fine. But they still use them. And I was asked by one of the premier experts on... Uh, on near-death experiences. His name's Melvin Morse. I didn't include his name in my bio, but I did work with Melvin Morse directly several years ago. A narcissist, a crazy woman by the name of Shelly. I'm not going to say her last name, but she's really crazy. Uh, she fancies herself a civilian FBI something or other, and she was really proud of the fact that she got some kind of civilian photograph with Leon Panetta, who's no champ in the civil liberties categories. I mean, he's an awful human being. Um, but she she uh, fancied herself a psychic detective. And she worked with me on that organization that also had a lot of ethical issues um, in their own 
uh, ways. Um, and she kind of, this is before I really knew who I was, <laughs> you know, I didn't really have any self-confidence or self-esteem. So I was taken advantage of a lot by really manipulative people with personality disorders and ego issues. And, um, she was awful. She was an awful human being. She would talk shit about me behind my back and she would constantly try to get into my good graces to my face. And she worked with me on this. She pulled me into this um, remote viewing experiment that Melvin Morse was conducting. And the reason I was hesitant to name his name is because he, um, separate from his research, which is excellent on near-death experiences, he's a very troubled man with his own issues with power and control. And he was apparently abusing his daughter and um, waterboarding her as a punishment. And uh, he had his... Uh, life ruined as a result of this. But he was a legitimate researcher on um, near-death experiences. And, um, you know, I, I put my website together while this was ha going down, and I think he had to serve jail time. Um, and it ruined his practice. It ruined his name. It ruined his everything. And this crazy woman, you know, pulled me into this experiment that I worked on. And we worked for two days straight. I didn't have air conditioning. It was Skype sessions. But I'm working in my sixth floor walk up, which is like basically living in an attic with no functioning air conditioning. And I'm practically fainting. And these people are just like, just push through, just push through. And I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. And they're like, just push through, just push through. And it was like, you know, 105 degrees Fahrenheit in my apartment without air conditioning. And I'm practically fainting. And I'm still being, I was still so good that uh, I got asked to work with the CIA on experiment and I flat out refused. I said, I don't work for Nazis. Um, and they really are. If you look at the OSS and the people who formed, um, what later became the CIA, they actually brought in, um, Nazis in Operation Paperclip to work in, uh, the scientific industrial complex, the psychiatric industrial complex and the military industrial complex and the aer aerospace uh, industrial complex. But anyway, the CIA are a bunch of white supremacist pigs and, uh, I hate them and I don't work with them. So I told them flat out and Melvin was just like, okay, okay. Um, but what happened was, um, as a result, he said, that's very interesting that you were so adamant about it because I've been approaching this, um, spiritual group in California and he wouldn't name the name, but he said that they were a small group, a spiritual group. It sounded like a cult kind of, but maybe not. Like, maybe they were like the Urantians or something. I don't know. But they used uh, remote viewing as a spiritual practice to join the cosmos and go out in the cosmos and go to the stars. And they had consistently been asked for 20 years by Melvin and other researchers if they would work with the CIA. And they, too, also flat out refused. And they said, that's not what it's for. It's not supposed to be used for military purposes. So I get these psychics who study at the Monroe Institute, which was also... Um, infiltrated by the FBI and other intelligence agencies. Um, and it just, you know, and they are promoting these things and they're promoting psychic development workshops. And I'm just like, I want to know why people want to do psychic development. Because every time I get close to this topic, it's either fraught with spiritual arrogance or just arrogance in general. It's sort of like people just want to be gods. It's like, okay, but what are you going to do with it? Flatter your ego? Or are you actually going to do something with it? What do you want to do with this? And I don't see anything being done with it. I don't see anything beneficial except for a, like maybe 1% of the people who are using it for what it's supposed to be used for. And um, the rest of it is just ego-based or it's psychic manipulation or it's remote influencing for really small change things like, you know, seduction or, you know, um, is he cheating on me? You know, that kind of stuff, which I suppose it's a big deal to the individual, but it's not really doing anything in the grand sense, the grand scheme of things. So I get really fed up with people who say they want to have psychic ability. Uh, you already have it. You already have it. And if you're talented, it's just, but it's just, the thing is, is like some people are natural uh, piano players and I wish I could play a musical instrument really well. I played electric bass when I was a teenager for 
about a year, two years, and I enjoyed it, and I was getting pretty good, but it got kind of boring. Um, and I, and then other things started happening with school, and I couldn't focus on it enough, but um, I enjoyed it while I, I did it, and I took piano very briefly as a kid, but I wasn't a natural. Like, I wasn't, I didn't live many past lives where I could just go in and do this thing that you see these kids on TV shows who just start playing Shostakovich, just like they're peeling a banana or something or peeling an apple. And, um, and, uh, I never have that. And most people don't have that. So while everyone is probably imbued with some level of intuition and it could take many different forms of, of ability, there's many different types of ability. It doesn't mean everyone's going to be able to play Shostakovich the first time, if you know what I mean. And I'm only interested in working with the people who have a clear vision in their mind of what they want to do with it. And they don't have to save the world. I don't want people to save the world. You don't have to save the world. You're not going, you're not going to. First off, you're not going to succeed if you just want to use it to save the world. That's not what it's there for. But if you use it in tandem with other things like common sense, your mind, your logic, your um, physical abilities, your uh, intelligence quotient, what you bring to the table, your emotional IQ is really important. It works better in tandem with life experience. And the less life experience you have, probably you may be more limited or you may be more talented. I don't know. But I know I I don't see anything other than ego fluffing with a lot of these so-called um, remote viewing courses and um, um, psychic development courses, which is why I've hesitated for years to um, produce a product like that. And it's taken me years. And most of you don't support me financially. Most of you are not donating to this channel. <clears throat> most of you are not donating to any legal funds for things that have happened to me of a nefarious nature, most of which had to do with top secret black psychic projects with the military. Uh, you know, <laughs> excuse me. Um, <clears throat> most people are not supporting me. So why should I support your ego? Why should I support your... Hollywood fantasy of what you think this is. Um, you're not here to support anyone. You're doing this for selfish reasons. You know, I'm not addressing the people who aren't doing it for that. But why Why should I do that? You know, and it, I think it's a fair question. Um, a lot of people who do these things are incredibly arrogant. And um, it doesn't really solve anything. It doesn't really take us to the next level. So I'm looking for a small but dedicated group of people who are determined to um, be sound in mind, body, and spirit, not just psychic development. That's If you have a weak ego, if you have weak boundaries, if you have daddy issues or um, people pleaser problems or just codependence or addictions, what makes you think that psychic ability is somehow going to rescue you from that? If anything, it's only going to make it worse. So I need you to think about, before approaching me for coaching, if that's what you want, To th and I'm going to detail further about what my coaching entails, but I really need you to think about what that entails because mostly the people who are benefiting from psychic ability are really nefarious people and or crazy people. Um, another common mistake that people make is they think if somebody's um, very psychically agile, it means they're spiritually evolved. Nothing could be further from the truth. This is a sense that you can develop, just like sense of taste or sense of smell. Um, if people have damaged taste buds and they can't taste something, their ability to taste is gonna be limited, yes? So, um, I can only go so far if you have, if you have damaged psychic ability receptors, there's only so far I can take you. So, um, psychic ability is not the point, but I'll, I'll do a part two.